20 years after its founding, Elon Musk's SpaceX has been at the top of the rocket industry's glory, the success as a result of owning the most powerful broomsticks in the United States. Firstly, Falcon 9 is the most launched among U.S. rockets. It's also the only U.S. rocket certified for transporting humans to the International Space Station. Next is Falcon Heavy, with the highest payload capacity of any currently operational launch vehicle. And Dragon, the only U.S. spacecraft that can put people into orbit. Definitely, you can't say about Starship, the tallest and most powerful fully reusable launch vehicle ever built. Is that all of Musk's monsters? I guess very few of you know there's another impressive name, Dragon XL. SpaceX has been awarded a contract to deliver cargo to lunar orbit, and the spacecraft they're planning to use is a new variant of the Dragon, the Dragon XL, and it's radically different from other members of the family. It's not designed for atmospheric re-entry or landing. It should be able to transport five tons of cargo to the Lunar Gateway as part of the Artemis program. Unfortunately, in fact, Elon Musk gave up on this new designed spacecraft for NASA lunar mission. How is it designed and working? What exactly happened to this ill-fated spacecraft? Let's expose everything in today's episode of the Alpha Tech Channel. In March 2020, NASA announced it had selected SpaceX to deliver the bulk of pressurized and unpressurized cargo, experiments, and other supplies to the Gateway, which would be assembled in an elliptical or egg-shaped orbit around the Moon. That would be needed to crew live and operate a proposed Gateway Lunar Space Station for the first several years of its existence. The deal gives SpaceX its first major role in NASA's Artemis program, which aims to land astronauts on the Moon. To accomplish that task, SpaceX would develop a heavily modified, single-use version of the Dragon 2 spacecraft, with more propellant storage, more space for cargo, and a range of other design changes. Named the Dragon XL, the large cargo vehicle looks more like a large Cygnus XL vehicle than a traditional Dragon design. Dragon XL would weigh 15 to 16 tons at liftoff and likely require a fully or partially expendable Falcon Heavy launch for each mission to the moon. The equipment delivered by SpaceX's Dragon XL missions could include sample collection materials, spacesuits, and other items astronauts may need on the Gateway and on the Moon's surface, according to NASA. The Dragon XL will dock autonomously with the Gateway Station, using docking and navigation equipment that flies on the Dragon 2 crew and cargo vehicles. The resupply spacecraft will stay at the Gateway for 6 to 12 months at a time when research payloads inside and outside the cargo vessel could be operated remotely, even when crews are not present. Returning to the Moon and supporting future space exploration requires affordable delivery of significant amounts of cargo, says Gwen Shotwell, SpaceX's president and chief operating officer, in a statement. Through our partnership with NASA, SpaceX has been delivering scientific research and critical supplies to the ISS since 2012, and we're honored to continue the work beyond Earth's orbit and carry Artemis cargo to Gateway. This is an exciting new chapter for human exploration, added Mark Weiss, the Deep Space Logistics Manager at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We are bringing the innovative thinking of commercial industry into the supply chain and helping ensure we're able to support crews preparing for lunar surface expeditions by delivering the supplies they need ahead of time. At the time, it was a fairly balanced and reasonable choice on NASA's part, leveraging existing investments and experience with SpaceX and Dragon and erecting no major technical hurdles. However, more than two years later, NASA and SpaceX still haven't started work on the contract. That's why the new NASA April 1st new request for information is so intriguing. In the document, NASA spells out what exactly it wants respondents to discuss. In a list of eight main questions, the agency repeatedly hints at a desire to substantially expand the scope of GLS. In question number eight, NASA asks if, to help create a vibrant supply chain in deep space, respondents would be able to deliver additional cargo to cislunar orbits and the lunar surface, or offer a dedicated delivery tug capability or rapid response delivery service. NASA seems very interested in the potential benefits of alternative deep space cargo transport services that are both cheaper and more capable than Dragon XL. Between the lines, however, the RFI also reads as if it was written directly to SpaceX. The first question is perhaps the most telling. Is your company interested in on-ramping to the GLS contract to provide logistics services as described in the original solicitation? You know, SpaceX is the only company with an existing GLS contract that it could on-ramp to. A roundabout way to say, start work on. 
In the following questions, NASA then repeatedly expresses interest in cargo transport capability well beyond the original contract requirements and ask about innovative new capabilities that could enable such improvements. NASA even recognizes and hints at a willingness to consider unorthodox solutions that, for example, might require more than one launch per cargo delivery or help minimize upfront costs to the government. Put simply, while it does open the door for just about any U.S. company to inform NASA about new GLS options, it's hard not to conclude that this new RFI is at least partly designed to give SpaceX an opportunity to propose Dragon XL alternatives or upgrades. And the most obvious option, Starship. Through the Human Landing System, or HLS, program, NASA has already committed to investing at least $3 billion to develop a crewed Starship moon lander and the fully reusable launch vehicle and refueling infrastructure required to launch and operate it. With barely any modification, the Starship architecture SpaceX and NASA are already developing could be used to deliver tons of pressurized cargo to cislunar space, lunar orbit, the gateway, the lunar surface, or just about anywhere else NASA wants. Leveraging that significant investment would also tick almost every box in NASA's new RFI by drastically reducing upfront and total development cost, helping to stimulate a vibrant deep space supply chain and beating Dragon XL's cargo capabilities by a factor of 5, 10, or even 20 plus. Of course, there's technical challenges and reasons to believe that Starship can't easily replace Dragon XL. Even Dragon XL risks running into Gateway's visiting vehicle mass limit of just 14 tons. Starship would likely weigh at least 100 to 200 tons, more than the entire Gateway. Dragon XL would use non-cryogenic propellant and is baseline to spend at least 6 to 12 months at a time at the Gateway. NASA has also studied the possibility of using Dragon XL as a crew cabin or bathroom to temporarily relieve Gateway's extremely cramped, habitable volume. Starship's main engines use cryogenic propellant that wants nothing more than to warm up and boil into gas, making it far harder to keep at the station for months at a time. Those problems are likely solvable, but it's still worth noting that Starship is not a perfect fit right out of the box. The RFI could also end with a whimper if SpaceX tells NASA that it's happy to proceed with Dragon XL as proposed. The probability of this is small rather than impossible, and only time will tell where the cards will ultimately fall. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section. Your support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.